pleasure to now request Dr. Sachin Kedar, a very good friend and uh, uh, a professor of ophthalmology and neurology, um, the Cyrus H. Stoner Professor of Ophthalmology and Vice Chair of Education at Emory University, uh, Georgia, and an outstanding speaker. So great pleasure uh, having you here, Sachin, and thank you for helping organize this international conclave. And he'll be talking on ischemic optic neuropathy. Yes, Sachin, you're on. Yeah. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Rohit, for that kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking here today at the uh, International Conclave. Uh, I have no financial interest to disclose. So I'll start with a brief case, which you will all quickly recognize. It's a 55-year-old male who wakes up with blurred vision in one eye that slowly progresses over five days. He's obese. He's got vascular risk factors. You examine him and he has reduced visual functions in the right eye. He's got a right RAPD and you correctly localize it to the right optic nerve. You look at his nerve and it is swollen. He has a visual field defect in that eye. You look at the fellow eye, it is small, it is crowded. There's a very small cup and you have correctly identified an anterior ischemic optic neuropathy which is the commonest cause of optic neuropathy in adults above the age of 50 years. So you can anatomically differentiate them into the anterior variety where you see the disc swelling and the posterior variety where you do not see the disc swelling. Pathophysiologically, they can be caused by inflammation and are called arteritic type, uh, or they can be the non-arteritic type, which is more common uh, than the other variety. The optic nerve is divided into these four segments. The intraocular part is the one that causes the anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, primarily because of a tenuous blood supply to this region. So the orbital canalicular and the intracranial parts of the optic nerve are supplied by a rich PL network, which makes it really resistant to ischemia because the blood supplies are multi-source in origin. The intraocular part of the optic nerve, however, receives blood supply through these paraoptic branches of the posterior ciliary artery from the circle of Zinhaler. And from the work of the great Sohan Here, we now think that the non arteritic entry ischemic optic neuropathy is because of arterial, arteriolar circulatory insufficiency at the optic nerve head. Other mechanisms have been proposed, but really not have been proven. What are the risk factors? So when I talk to my patients, I talk about uh, immutable risk factors, which means things that you can't do anything about. Age is a big one. Born with a small disc with a small cup, which puts you at a risk for a tight optic nerve causing ischemia of the optic nerve head. You can clearly see it on fundus pictures. We saw some of the pictures that uh, Dr. Padmaja presented in the previous uh, talk. Optic disc drusen puts you at an increased risk for this condition, primarily because there is tightness of the optic nerve head, and presumably that increases your risk for circulatory insufficiency over here. Cataract surgery, controversial, but a large uh, series uh, published, I think a year ago, showed that there might be a slightly increased incidence of this condition within one year of the surgery, particularly in those patients who have a disc at risk and who have other vascular risk factors. Systemic risk factors have been looked at in non arteritic entry ischemic optic neuropathy, and major series showed that these patients do have hypertension and diabetes. Dr. Hare also proposed that if the patient is susceptible to nocturnal hypotension, which means the blood pressure drops in the early morning, then they often wake up with visual problems in that particular eye. Sleep study, there is no questions at this time, increases your risk for having this condition, particularly in those with a disc at risk. Uh, it's a four to six fold increased risk. So I have now gone from uh, asking people to consider getting it to encouraging them to go ahead and get it. Uh, it's an easily treatable condition and no re reason to ignore it. 
Younger patients, younger than the age of 50 years, also have ischemic optic neuropathy, especially those with multiple risk factors, and you have to look out for those. What about medications? There are some that we know, and there are some that are not uh, proven completely. The erectile dysfunction drugs are probably the most prevalent medications that are not commonly uh, evident to us. Studies have shown that there might be increased risk in people who, are, who use the erectile dysfunction drugs, particularly if the patient says they used it just before the onset of ischemic optic neuropathy. And several database cohort studies suggest that there is an increased risk of almost two folds in people on these medications. We are all aware of the effects of imiodrone and interferon alpha producing this condition. And anecdotally in my clinical practice, I have seen other medications such as linezolid also cause uh, ischemic optic neuropathy. Natural history of this condition is important to know. Two large series, the HERE series and the IONDT uh, series studied this. And we know that about six months, vision improvement occurs in about 40% of the patients or 40% of the eyes. Vision remains stable in another 40% and vision deteriorates in about 20%. And so whenever a study is designed to test the efficacy of any medication, it has to beat these odds. And that's a difficult thing to do. Risk of Involvement of the same eye or the fellow eye is considerable in this condition. Same eye is about three to 6% if you look at hair series, about 15 to 25% in the hair series and about 15 to 20% in the IONDT and having diabetes increases your risk. What about the risk for future vascular events? The results are conflicting. Um, there, is, uh, there are studies by Harry and Lee which showed that you may have an increased risk for cerebrovascular or cardiovascular events, but then there are other studies which say maybe not so. So the jury is still out for future vascular events. We don't have any proven treatment for this condition. Uh, we are all aware of Dr. Heyre's uh, study using prednisone, but this was not a true randomized clinical trial. And so the we, we currently do not recommend oral prednisone, at least in our practice at Emory. Uh, however, we do consider it on a case-by-case -case basis, especially if the patient's uh, second eye is involved or if they ask specifically for being prescribed a prednisone. The reason we don't do it is because you may cause inadvertent side effects from worsening their diabetes or high blood pressure. Uh, none of the other therapies have proven the large clinical trial with intravitreal siRNA stopped prematurely because it could not reach its therapeutic endpoint. So at this time, management of ischemic optic neuropathy of the non-arteritic variety is primarily focused on reduction of risk factors, vascular risk factors, medication review, avoiding nocturnal antihypertensive medication usage to prevent nocturnal hypotension, avoiding anemia hypotension, and sleep study, although I say when indicated, uh, I almost always get it in every patient with NAION just because of the risk of fellow eye involvement. So I'll quickly switch over to the next case and um, uh, the panelists uh, and, the, uh, and the moderators, you can stop me when it is time for me to stop. Hopefully I'll do it on time. A 79 year old woman presents with transient monocular vision loss that occurred for two weeks resulting in a complete loss of vision for about two days. She has headache. She complains of a swollen and a swore nerve on, uh, on her temple. Uh, we palpate her temporal arteries and it is really uh, tender. And she has reduced vision in, in the right eye, but also in the left eye. She's got a large RAPD on the right side. So when you look at the fundus, you see, again, swollen optic nerves. It's a pale swollen optic nerve on the right side, slightly swollen on the left side with some cotton wool spots. So this, as you would have identified, is a case of arteritic AION with the most common cause being giant cell arteritis and the AION being the most common cause of vision loss in this condition, the others being ophthalmic artery occlusion, ciliaretinal artery occlusion. 
we often get blood tests to confirm this condition. And I often tell my residents, do not even wait for the blood test. As soon as you see a patient with giant cell arthritis in your clinic, go ahead and treat them with steroids and then send them for blood tests. Elevated ESR and C-reactive protein has been shown to have a very high specificity for giant cell arthritis and AION uh, with about 97% specificity. However, remember that 22% of patients with clinical giant cell arthritis may have a normal ESR C-reactive protein. We also know that these patients may have reactive thrombocytosis, mostly due to the inflammation, can be seen in 50% of these patients, and several studies suggest that this may portend an increased risk for permanent vision loss. Temporal artery biopsy is the gold standard and should be performed in all patients who are suspected of giant cell arthritis. And what I tell my trainees is, if you write the word giant cell arthritis in your differential, you have essentially obligated yourself to get a temporal artery biopsy. We all know that it, it need, initially you can have a unilateral temporal artery biopsy, get a long segment, and have a dedicated and an experienced uh, pathologist look at it because there might be skip lesions uh, that, you'll, that might be missed. Treatment should be, uh, the biopsy should be done without, within two weeks of starting glucocorticoid therapy. Giant cell arthritis is a medical emergency. If you see one in your clinic, make sure you send them to a rheumatologist. There's fellow eye complications. There are vascular complications involving the aorta, the mesenteric uh, uh, blood supply, myocardial blood supply, and cerebrovascular disease. And if you look at this survival function in the graph over here, the cumulative five-year survival is about 35%. So be very aggressive in the treatment of this condition. Don't do it by yourself. Make sure you have help from a rheumatologist or a primary care. Steroids remain the mainstay of treatment. We start with the induction of three days of IV steroids, followed by a long and slow steroid taper. I often use aspirin. Uh, in these patients as an adjunct therapy. Recently, you would have all heard about tocilizumab, uh, which has been proposed as a therapy for this condition. Remember the studies that have been done using tocilizumab, all were done on giant cell arthritis who did not have ischemic optic neuropathy. So we at this time do not know the role in, in the in patients with GCA who have ischemic optic neuropathy, and we partner with our rheumatologist and often end up putting patients on tocilizumab primarily for its steroid sparing agent. Methotrexate has been tried in the past with mixed results. And recently, abetacept was also shown to reduce the risk of relapse in these conditions. And our rheumatologist, I know of at least one patient who was on abetacept for this. Back to our patient, high ESR, high re C-reactive protein confirming that this could be giant cell arthritis. Patient was treated with IV methylprednisone for gram a day for three days, discharged on oral prednisone 70 milligrams a day and, and aspirin. Results of the biopsy, classical for giant cell arthritis with the dense inflammatory infiltrate and giant cells in the blood vessels and vascular occlusion. A month later, there was slight improvement of visual function, 660 in the right eye, 612 in the left eye. And so to conclude, non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy is the commonest for, form of optic neuropathy in the, in the adults about the age of 50 years. We do not have any proven therapy at this point. The arteritic variety of AION is a medical emergency, must be treated immediately with steroids. In fact, in my clinic, if I have a patient who has giant cell arthritis, they don't leave my clinic without me watching 70 milligrams of prednisone going down their throat. If you have them go to the ER, they will wait in the ER and they'll have their fellow eye involved. Partner with a rheumatologist to manage patients with arthritic entry ischemic optic neuropathy. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin, for